Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be uh, hopefully relatively short, hopefully not too long, but we'll be talking about the potential for a rather significant storm system uh, that could be occurring. I know it's, it's August and we're talking about a storm system and yes, Obviously, rain and storms still occur, but this is not just a thunderstorm. There could be a fairly interesting feature here that could be coming from the west into the east, dropping lots of rain. And it's the more organized one of the season, I would say. Not the most, but one of the, you know, better ones. And uh, so, really consider subscribing to this channel. Consider liking the video. We're uh, close to 10,000 subscribers, so that would be really nice if we could reach that uh, anytime soon. Uh, so consider subscribing and let's get into this so right now we're looking at the GFS model this is a six hour outlook you can see uh, there's a high pressure actually right here and spinning clockwise and oh you can see that uh, those that's basically what's driving this uh, not to it's basically what's keeping this from going too far to this band of shower and band of showers and from evolving into much strength I mean if we go and put into motion here you can see it kind of fizzles out doesn't really do much and then we see a resurgence of moisture from the west from the Pacific and this is where things get really interesting look at this you could see that uh, we could be looking at a rather significant potential wave so look at this it initially starts off as a line of thunderstorms possibly across the eastern US to go South Dakota Nebraska and if we go forward you could see look at that we see these colors and this is uh, indicative of some thunderstorms but then this evolves into some uh, into a fairly significant rain band and you can see as it moves off into the Northeast it's fairly widespread obviously I think the GFS is showing it a little bit too strong I don't think it will be you know that widespread but still it's gonna leave some uh, decent rains and uh, I just want to uh, show you now the total accumulated precipitation and show you how much rain would fall with this. Uh, and again, I think the GFS is under uh, overestimating the the widespread uh, area of this, but I think it's underestimating the actual rainfall amounts because uh, thunderstorms are notorious for producing lots of rain in a short amount of time, and they could be you know more isolated than rather than widespread, which what the GFS is showing. So you can see that first wave, and then we see that big uh, wave of of, uh, of rain possibly reaching the northeast. And you know this may not look too significant. However, many locations across the uh, across uh, these areas have been very very dry, and many need the rain across these areas. It, it may not seem like it, but this spring has been very wet, or a very uh, you know very soggy plenty of rain however now it's turned around and most of the farmers that already were late to plant their corn or soybeans or whatever they want to whatever their crop is are already struggling yet again because there's not a, there's a lack of rainfall now so there you can see that uh finally we might be getting some rain and if we look at the very long term wrong range there you can see the amounts are actually pretty generous especially if you go towards the south and southeast but even for the plains so that's like the first feature I'd like to show you. Uh, I think the NAM model may show, okay, it does show this. Okay, so let's go uh, to the radar, rain slash frozen, because the NAM only goes out to 84 hours, so sometimes, you know, it's it can be used only for the short term. And you can see that here's like that first wave kind of fizzles out. But then uh, Sunday night or Sunday it develops and then Monday night into Sunday across the Chicago area. But it basically starts trekking across the country or, uh, on Monday through the day Monday. And you can see that this actually drops quite a good dose of rain across much of these uh, portions of the country. And then it moves on but it doesn't go much farther than 84 hours. And you already saw a sneak peek at the total, not snowfall, total accumulated precipitation. You can see uh, quite a generous amount. Uh, I mean some locations possibly getting about uh, four or five inches of rain which would definitely be uh, useful but you know maybe a little bit too much at once if we were to look at the ECMWF and see what it's showing uh, let's go to the lower uh, let's go uh, let's go to see because I don't have okay um yeah fine let's go to 500 millibar in Emily and actually no that's pretty that's pretty weak um, let's see what we could 
maybe we could use this. Uh, this basically shows us where the lows and the highs are, and uh, hopefully this gives us a better gauge of what the European model is showing. And you can still see, yeah, okay, it does show that low pressure right there. So all the models are in agreement that some sort of low pressure system would be forming and producing some rain across these, across the part of the country. And you could see possibly more in the long range. Uh, if we were to go to our my local national weather service, the local national weather service station. Uh, you can see that actually uh, if we were to go to just click on my location and see what is forecasted to it for it you can see that showers likely Monday Monday night uh, and then Sunday possibility as well but uh, definitely sh seeing that chance of rain and I'm telling you we, the last time we had a 60% chance of rain chance of rain this far out was a very long time ago and most of the time it was something like this mostly sunny mostly clear mostly sunny mostly clear which yeah granted is very nice but it's, you know, it's very useful and beyond useful to have a little bit of rain once in a while. We, you know, there's, again, farmers are struggling with their crops already. We need some more rain. And if we were to look at the drought monitor just for some um, drought monitor, I just want, I would want to show you that, uh, that, uh, that we are looking actually at a a potential you can see a little bit of dry uh, abnormally dry or abnormally dry weather across the, the you know the Illinois Iowa Missouri area and you may be like okay that's not too abnormal but this was all flooded in the spring so that's how quickly it could you know quickly it could turn around if we go to outlooks you could see that uh, uh, we see a, a development likely drought development likely across this area because we've just been seeing no rain at all and at this point it doesn't seem like much improvement will be happening but with this storm system uh, we could be looking at some improvement so hopefully that does occur and we are looking at you know a a a, a more organized storm system and probably the best organized storm system we've seen in a while and let's go to the old gfs this is a gfs legacy and this the, the reason for it why is it a legacy it's because well basically it's the old one it's kind of like the legend <laughs> the legendary gfs we now have the new one in place but this is this was the old one if you we were to look at it you could see here it's still a very good model and it's still very useful but you could see that it still shows that rain the, that band of rain uh, right there across much of the country developing and moving to the east so hopefully that it does actually happen since we definitely do need that rain so uh, that's basically it for today's video. Just wanted to give you a quick update on that precip map, on kind of like the precip, uh, the in general, you know, not really the temperatures. We could look at the temperatures, but I think I'll save that for a different video. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.